Hello, moms and dads, boys and girls, teachers and students. This is Kay Ryan Hennessy, and it is time to get creative. Today, we're going to be drawing, inking, and painting with watercolor Medusa, a monster miniature. As always, I'm starting with all of my materials prepared. That means I have my paper pre-cut, ready to go, my pencils are sharpened, my brushes are clean, my paint is mixed, and I have fresh water ready to go. Everything is set so that I won't have to get up and interrupt my creative time. I've begun by sketching out in pencil Medusa. And for those of you paying attention and who can see well enough with the very light pencil lines, you'll notice that I'm not using an eraser at all. This pencil lead is designed so that it's very light, it's a hard weight uh, lead, and that allows it to disappear underneath the final painted product. And you'll see as we go on, they'll be barely visible at all, and I don't have to worry about the mess or the destruction that erasers bring to the paper. So sketching out Medusa, I'm thinking of ways in which I'm going to position her. So you'll notice that her arms are stretched in kind of funky ways so that I could put the bow and arrow in her hands. I'm also going to add a background to the Medusa just so that there's a little bit of interest in the picture. You, of course, can do this in your own projects. Regardless of whether there's a background or not, you can make them more interesting or as simple as you'd like. That's the great thing about art, whether you're painting a monster alongside me, whether you're drawing, coloring, writing, sculpting, anything it is that you're working on right now, you always have the opportunity to create something that is your own. As you can see now, I'm going over Medusa with my ink pen. This is my special waterproof ink that will not bleed when I run over it with the watercolor. Do not use a normal ballpoint pen if you're going to paint over ink. Save your inking until the end of your project. I'm only inking this now so that you can more easily see the whole character for the rest of the video. Medusa is one of my favorite monsters. In fact, she may be my favorite monster of all the monsters that ever existed or thought of or made believe. One of the reasons that Medusa is my favorite is because she has snakes for hair. And, I mean, come on, who doesn't want snakes for hair? Imagine all the cool things they could do. People were mad at you, you could hiss at them. People were nice to you, you could rub up against them with your little snake hair. It'd be really fun. But there are a couple of myths about Medusa and how she came to be that make her one of the more interesting monsters, I think. Medusa comes to us from Greek mythology. And she is a primordial being. She's one of the early creatures that appears when the Earth and the universe were still new. She's a child of the early monsters, Typhon and uh, Echidna. And there are two versions of how Medusa came to be. In one version, she's born to the monsters, Typhon and Echidna, and is raised with her monster brother, brothers and sisters, uh, Hydra, for instance, the Cyclops, etc., etc. The other story is that Medusa was once this most beautiful woman. So beautiful that looking upon her could strike a man's heart and he would fall in love instantaneously. And the gods were jealous of this beauty that she had, and so they cursed her, and they made it so that Medusa's beauty, rather than striking the heart of a man, would turn him into stone. And that's how it came to be that Medusa became this figure of ugliness and hideousness. But the reality is, Medusa, in almost all of the ancient myths, is represented as the most beautiful woman. She happens to have snake for hair. When Perseus eventually defeated Medusa, he beheaded her. And out of her body sprang the Pegasus. And this is another really interesting, neat thing about Medusa. Here she is, she's an earth monster. She represents creatures who burrow into the ground and come back up into the air. And from her death comes this 
air monster, this air creature that's representative of goodness and light and honor, and that's the Pegasus, the winged horse. And I just think that the idea that out of the ugliness, quote-unquote ugliness, we, we know that Medusa was beautiful, but because she's depicted so ugly, to have something like Pegasus come out of her, that's really inspirational. Our world is filled with rich stories. Stories like that of Medusa. Stories like that of Perseus and the Pegasus and Andromeda. These stories appear in art, they appear in literature, they appear in our own imaginations. And I encourage you, as you continue to get creative, as you continue to paint monsters of your own, I encourage you to do a little research. Find out more about them. Go online. If you want to create a monster, say you want to make the many-headed hydra, the dragon with nine heads. Go online with mom and dad. What was the Hydra? What did it look like? What are some pictures that are out there? Explore it. Then make it your own. Draw it. Color it. Have fun with what you're doing. In the final stages of the painting, you see I'm blending some colors together. I added a little bit of rosiness underneath her eyes for her cheeks. For her tail there, I added a rattlesnake tail when I was drawing, and I blended a little bit of orange with a little bit of brown. Now we're going to finish by adding some emerald for her hair for the snakes. And after the emerald in her hair, I'm going to create a mixture of different greens for her body. You can do this by blending your watercolor paints right on the page. You just put a little bit of green down, and then you go back with your olive green, and you just add a little bit of color. I like to lightly drop them. If you're working with crayon, you can color in one direction with one color, say a light green, and then color up and down a different direction in the dark green. Going left to right with one color and up and down with the other color creates overlapping marks on your paper. And this adds depth to the painting. Here you can see the light emerald with the darker olive. It's going to blend up, give a little bit more depth to the overall piece. A little finishing touches. And then when you are finished with your painting, you should always sign it and be proud of your work. Thanks for coming. Be sure to visit kryanhennessy.com for more monsters. You can find them in 100 Monsters But I'm Not Afraid and The Monster Ballad, available for iTunes and Amazon.com.